Hello gentle viewers and welcome to another episode of Alistair Reviews It. And today I am joined by my husband and co-host for Falcon Winter Soldier. I am back everybody, I'm back. I'm contractually obligated to be here. <laughs> so we will be covering this show. Um, I have to say, my, by the way, my husband wakes me up at the track of dawn to watch this show. So if I got crusties everywhere, then I apologize. But we are about halfway through this show. Can you believe that? Oh my gosh, we are. We're halfway through the show. That's weird. Yeah, um, that is weird. And still, it feels like it's been on too long. <laughs> <laughs> I feel so. like it's been on too short. Uh, maybe. Because I, 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 I feel like we haven't covered enough ground. Maybe. I think this would have worked so much better as a movie. Two hour movie. Um, I don't know. Well, I, I'll, I'll reserve judgment on that until the very end. What did, uh, uh, so far, I'm, I'm like... Okay, now let's go. Come on now. I, I definitely understand the argument because, I mean, what I talked about in our last, well, in my last uh, review is that I felt kind of unsatisfied by the episodes. I really liked them and I think they're really well made, but I felt slightly unsatisfied. And uh, in this episode, I, I really liked it. But I also really didn't like parts of it, and we'll, we'll talk about those now. So this episode starts out with the like infomercial commercial for the Global Reparation Council. No, Global Repatriation oh. Council. See, Global he, Repatriation look Council. Look at him. Should I host this show? <laughs> um, yeah, the opening is is the is like an advert for the Global Repatriation show, uh, Council for. I love the people who blipped out and Displaced. are now back. Um, and the tagline for it was, get back to the th way things were. Which, I think is very poignant here in this episode, because later on, we like we see, and we know from living in this world, like, I guess it's kind of based on our own reality, so yeah. it's fair to say that things were not the best the way before, you know? Uh, they, they were not that great before anyway. What, and not only that, it's it's not like it's been a year or two years, it's been five years that means people have grown up, but people have, you know, gotten promoted or in different jobs. And now you're trying to restore people, you know, like in those jobs, yeah. you know, uh, now you're taking people out of jobs who have worked five years to build up what they could after this blip. And really, it's just unfair on all on all sorts of uh, levels. And that's why we have the Flag Smashers yeah. um, is they're, they're people who weren't the people who, who st stayed behind the people who built up the world uh, to be able to take back the world. And so it, it, it was cool seeing this kind of commercial. It almost reminded me of WandaVision and all of their commercials. Well, I know. When I saw it, I was like, I can't <laughs> need any more of this. But I mean, I think things like this are good because you, you do kind of get more inside into this world and how, how things are being marketed to them because um, we see in everyday life propaganda is, is, is shot to us through commercials constantly you know um, propaganda for a multitude of different things and here in this world the same thing is, is being you know these people come back and it's like hey guys everything was fine the way before we're just gonna get back to, to business the way everything was going and then you have this group of people who's like hey wait a minute things were starting to get better when these people blipped out, we were finally, our voices were finally being heard. We were we finally mourned. coming together. We mourned, yes. And it was a terrible thing, but we were finally coming together as a people. And now these people are back, and you're wanting to go back to the way things were five years ago. And and they're not having it. And so I, I get it. I get it. I mean, it's, it's always hard to find a place um, for, for people. Yeah. But, and, and then, so after that, we get into the new Captain America just busting up uh, one of the hideouts for the flag smashers, and at this point, I can tell he's fed up. He's like, "No more, no more, Mister Nice, Captain America. I'm, I'm just gonna like be like, like I could tell this entire episode he was fed up with how of, of being a nice guy, and he's figured that being the not nice guy, the bad guy, is the way to go forward. And I feel like we're building up to him being some sort of villain. I, I, I see it coming. Um, let me say. Don't ever, <laughs> cut that out. Don't ever freaking spit in my face because I'll do the same damn thing. Um, now you'd headbutt somebody. I'd headbutt. Somebody. <laughs> that's, that's like one of the ultimate signs of disrespect. You never do that. However, uh, Steve Rogers would have never been this emotional. No, he like gets in his face. He gets so mad. He's like on the verge of tears. He's like, "Do you know who I am?" And you know, there's an ego there. We we get a clear ego problem that's coming from John Walker. Um, whether he's got 
feels like he's got something to live up to or not. Like, dude is just uh, he he wants respect for the position he has, but he hasn't. Uh, but he hasn't earned that respect but did yet. Steve Rogers really earned. I guess he did. He did. He, first movie, yeah. He, yeah, he he, 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 he earned the respect that he got, and he, he knew that he had to earn the respect of uh, of everybody. Yeah. So. so. Uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm over Dumb Walker already. Let's go. Okay, and then we get into uh, the most bothersome part of, for me at least, the most bother- bothersome part of this episode is uh, we get to Falcon and Winter Soldier, and they go to um, talk to Zemo, right? And the Winter Soldier said, like, yeah, I need to go in there alone. I'm like, how does this sound like a good idea? He mind controlled you. Obviously, you know, we got we get that dispelled. The words don't work on him anymore or whatever. But then he decides to help him break it was out. So dumb. It was so dumb. Oh, oh, it was so I, I think that was so badly written. I just don't understand what the point was there. Maybe somebody can educate me in the comments down below. Um I'll read for that, but it didn't seem like it was even a helpful like Zemo was even a helpful tool throughout the episode. Yeah, um, and we'll get into the kind of the reasons why a little bit later. But he, he, they just like break him out. He doesn't really consult Sam. He just kind of does it, and it just maybe it's going to go somewhere. I don't well, know. I was I, I didn't like it. Well, my main thought uh, during this uh, is that one. You know, he did all this stuff in Civil War. He's uh, he tore apart he, the Avengers. He's the reason yeah. the Avengers were torn apart, right? He, that's what everybody's saying. Yeah, and he's he, he's the reason T'Challa's father died. Yeah, see? and that's why he, he, he and that's one one of the biggest reasons why he actually well obviously he did everything uh, yeah. and uh, for the Sicordia Award, but like that's one of the reasons like Wakanda wanted justice. And at this point, like, and I know that you know the the Winter Soldier or the White Wolf, you know, was a a fugitive, you know. In Wakanda, he was a guest of Wakanda. He spent years in Wakanda. And at this point, it just seems like a slap in the face that he would break out like one of their worst enemies. I think so, and I also think that it's like I would like I would understand breaking out like a former foe, or like you know, you know, the foe and the the, the two enemies become frenemies, and they you know battle it out. But like this guy did some really bad stuff, like above average bad stuff. He's yeah. very bad. You know, this is like a Nazi, pretty yeah. much. And so, yeah, it, it, I just don't. I don't. I don't know. I didn't agree with it. It it seemed a tad bit lazy to me. If if I really under, if I really understood why the need was to break him out, then I would. Oh, uh, like if he actually had been worth it, maybe that would have justified it a little bit. But it really just doesn't justify it, and it it just seems almost contrary to Bucky's character to do that. Also, I don't know. He's I mean he's pretty Bucky's pretty unhinged already. So I, he he doesn't make rational decisions. I don't think all the time anyway. Um, he's kind of like an emotional leader. Um, yeah, I, he 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 is an emotional leader. I mean, yeah, I feel like he's got a little bit of static syndrome here. So it's <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It, 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 it's funny because. Uh, after they break Zemo out, it almost becomes Zemo's show. It does. And yeah. It's like, I just am not here for Zemo being the one who's like Leading delivering them. all of these little moments and, and, and statements that we're supposed to take some some sort of lesson away from. Like or like later when he says, uh, like, you know, uh, uh, fashion forward black man in the U.S. will be a pimp. Like, why is that coming from Zemo? Like, I don't want to. I mean. He's right. Well, He's it, right, no, but why well, is it, it, from Zemo? it actually came from Sam because Sam said that, and then Zemo uh, said, "Yes, of course you'd think that a fashion forward oh, uh, black man would be a pimp." But uh, Sam is not happy about Zemo getting out, and so and rightfully yeah, yeah, so, yeah, rightfully so. But it was a stupid decision. He should have been consulted on it. But he, he still goes it. along with it, which also seems a little, a little weird because well, it's already done at this. He's point. like, oh, well. but these two are already like have had their names cleared and have had to, you know, kind of reintegrate into like the government and, and all that and, and it just seems like a stupid kind of yeah. decision it seems like everybody was at this would point. have been more interesting to see them trying to sort of stay within their guidelines but trying to get more creative with the ways that they're going to go about their plan you know well it's also yeah. interesting when we get to the the sharon carter portion of it is you know she did something similar right yeah. and she's still on the run yeah. and it's almost like oh 
you know, we've been pardoned, so we can just break out a a huge international terrorist. Exactly, and it's like it's just like it's it's like well, and jeopardize everything. This is what I can't stand about superhero stuff, and this is why, like, I, I'm just not a huge superhero fan. Is that they do things without consequence? Like, there are never any consequences. When the uh, Civil War was about, the closest we've come to consequences on, on that front, you know. And then they're breaking the rules again. They're breaking the laws again. They're breaking out this guy who shouldn't be broken out, and then. They're, they're going to be fine. They're literally just going to be fine. Nothing's going to happen with them. I mean, I guess we'll wait and see. We've got three yeah. more episodes. But, like, I feel like nothing's going to happen with them. Um, uh, Sharon Carter is on the run. Like, there's a line a little bit later where Sam says, Hey, you help us, and I'll get you, I'll get you pardoned. I'll clear your name. And... I'm sitting there like this should have already happened. She should be fine right now. Oh. If you two were fine, she should be fine too. You know, Br- it's bu- oh. ridiculous. Br- <laughs> it, 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 when we get to that part, bring it up, bring that line up again because I have something to say about that. But um, th- this is my my biggest issue with uh, this episode. But then they get on the the plane, and uh, for some reason Zemo gets a hold of. Bucky's notebook, which I didn't know was also Steve Steve's notebook. I knew Steve had written it written in a notebook like that, but I did not know that Steve left Bucky his Steve's notebook. Steve's notebook, yeah. And Bucky, his, I was almost like, Buffy's, oh my gosh, Bucky's got it bad. They want us to like feel this in every single episode. They want to be like, oh, Bucky just is so in love with with Steve. <laughs> He's like, do you think he is bisexual? <laughs> do you think it could be? Well, he's not. Well, uh, it, it, and uh, Zemo talks about we're, we're trying, trying to get Zemo's portion of it, and he, he gets, he's like, "Yeah, American super soldiers are always put on a pedestal, you know, when maybe they shouldn't be put on a pedestal." Uh, None of these people should be put on a pedestal. Do you know how many lives they've taken? All of these people, all of these people, we like focus on Bucky so much as like, "Well, you were a baddie, you were killing people." Do you know how many buildings I saw blown up in this series? In this whole. Not the series. Marvel uh, Universe. MCU, yeah. The MCU. And there was th- there were people in those buildings. There were people who died. Like, they're all bad. They're, they all need to need to be held accountable. And let's stop focusing on Bucky and kind of focus on a little bit of everybody. You have too much power. You're not going to be held on a pedestal. Good. We need to use you as some sort of, you know, good force. But you don't just get away scot-free. Well, it's always, you know? it, I mean, there's always hard decisions to make. Um... And I think because I I like kind we of on be, the other side we would be the expendable people we well, would die in the building and well, nobody the, the, would, the, no the, no our deaths would never be avenged they would never be nobody would be held accountable for, for our deaths nothing and nothing. this is why Zachary is on Zemo's side you know what at least with you know the you're test, you're on Zemo's side at right least now least with the uh, you know what I, uh, Zemo Zach Zemo <laughs> Zach Zemo <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> let's move on okay. <laughs> We're gonna get you a purple mask. Um, so <laughs> then they go to the legendary city of Madripoor, yeah. and we we have that comment about Madripoor. the fashion Madripoor. We have that comment about the fashion forward black man or well, American black man. But like, I think that that comment kind of like ironically like applies to almost all American men who feel like they shouldn't dress nicely because if they dress nicely, it might send you know bad you know uh, yeah like messages or whatever so i thought that was interesting and then um well it's kind of also like you know when you see in this country like there there is a problem with like when you see a black person driving a nice car and then there are people who like give them looks it's like well how do you how could like people cops pull black people over for driving nice things all the time and they're like well you know how could you drive something that's nice or something like that you know yeah that sort of thing happens all the time and so when you see a black man wearing really nice clothes um like you know, like they say, it, 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 he's maybe labeled a pimp or something like that. Instead of like maybe he's an Avenger who can wear nice things, you know. Uh, well, just, I don't know because thought. apparently like Avengers don't get paid. It, it, yeah. yeah, they don't get paid, so <laughs> he just be wearing a burlap sack, I guess. <laughs> but uh, it, uh, so for they go to the bar. You know, we have a, a lot of nice scenes. It's pretty, um, and then they go to the bar and. Uh, they're, you know, Winter Soldier is supposed to be Winter Soldier. You know, he's playing himself. Uh, Zemo's playing himself. And then um, uh, Sam is playing the Smiling Tiger. I don't know. Yeah. And, and they give him that weird drink. You know, it was kind of funny. And then we see Sharon Carter, like, kind of leave. I didn't see that until the, the, the second walkthrough. And we get the actual moment of 
Bucky being Winter Soldier. And I've, I've felt throughout this po- portion of the series and even p- parts of Infinity War and Endgame that Winter Soldier was powered down a bit. But I actually don't think he was powered down. I think Bucky's been holding himself back. Well, of course, a hundred percent. Yeah, been holding himself back. Like if we get that moment where, when you know, before Zemo gets out and and Bucky's you know confronting him, and Zemo says, "There's still a little bit of something in there." Yeah, he's still got. He's still the Winter Soldier. Like that just didn't get just turned off. You know, he's still got all the memories. He's still got you know the power. He's got like it's just you know Angel he, got his yeah. soul back. Well, and he, he he's also so he's definitely been restraining himself yeah. in all like the, the fighting scenes from before, and then here it's almost like he drops into Winter Soldier mode and actually you know does Winter Soldier tactics, and it was almost refreshing to see, but also kind of scary because I, I loved what they did with the music in the background because you could hear the music from the Winter Soldier, the screaming music yeah. of like him being screaming from the inside because he's trapped, and I it, it's him struggling. Trying to, you know, use his skills for good, but also knowing that if he really uses his skills, maybe he might lose himself too. Oh, goodness, whatever. Do you know? <laughs> okay, so here, Z, this is why I, I want somebody to explain to me why the whole Z, Z, Zemo plot line works. Because I'm seeing here that is, they, go, they go back to this place, very Blade Runner 2049. Um looking place and and nobody freaking likes Zemo. Nobody wants him around. So who is he really helping? I feel like Sam and Bucky could have formulated this sort of plan on their own. Mm-hmm. They didn't really need Zemo to do it. Uh, maybe Zemo, you know, got them ahead a couple steps early, but they I feel like they would have arrived at the same destination at some point. Um, and yep. Zemo really just like, but I, I don't, he gives them a private plane ride. I don't know. You yeah, know. Well, yeah, maybe that's it. Maybe he paid for their airfare because you know they can't afford oh, anything because yeah. they don't get paid. Yeah, I'm gonna stop it <laughs> They're like, we have to break out a baron because otherwise we're not gonna have any money because Tony Stark is gone. And the government's <laughs> like, can you do it over Zoom? <laughs> we'll give you a free Zoom login. There's a free trial that you can use. Oh, uh, but God, well, you know what? The- Put that in there. You know that'll make sense. They need yeah. somebody to fund their stuff. So Zemo's pretty much gonna trade uh, the Winter Soldier, like. Fake. I mean, he, he comes up with this fake plan that he can trade the Winter Soldier for uh, information. Because, I guess because the whole the whole episode is like there's somebody who has the uh, who's made the Super Soldier Serum. Yeah, and so they want to know who that is, and he's like, it seems like I will trade you the Winter Soldier for the, the information on that person, and. Uh, Sam, Sam's <laughs> sister calls. This was so funny. I I did get a little tense stuff when he answered because she, the the woman who's like the big boss lady. She's like, um, he put it on speaker and, and he puts it on speaker and she's uh, Sam's sister's on the other line. She's mad because it's been you know what they just had that ep- that episode in episode one. They talked about they were gonna get the boat on on track this this boat in business and then Sam takes off <laughs> and she calls him and she's like, hey, when are we dealing with this? What are we doing here? Um, and then she calls him Sam, and they all know, like, the jig is up, and so... Uh, what did you, well, she calls him Sam, and then she gets on her, her kids for Cheerios. And he is such a bad... Well, he's an actor being a bad actor yeah, really during bad. it. I he's like, know. oh, yeah, I'm going to kill that banker. He's like, I, <laughs> I have laundered so much money. <laughs> yeah, we're like, going what? to kill the banker. <laughs> it's just... It was, it, it, it was funny. It was, was, it was, was kind of yeah. seeing, seeing that. Yeah. But then we find out that... That Sharon Carter has been their uh, their little angel, like kind of saving them from this situation. We we finally see Agent Carter, uh, and she talks about how she's been on the loose for. I'm I'm not sure if she blipped, but if she didn't blip, she's been on the run for she, seven she's years. Been on the run. I don't think yeah. she blipped. She's been on the run. Um, she hasn't spoken to her family. Or well, seven and a half that. years actually. And again, you know, she has to make a deal with these two crazy people three crazy people now well, um and she has to make a deal with them and to get her name cleared in order to help them when she already freaking helped them the first time um but go into your statement about that well i just want to say i love emily van camp yes and she's such an underrated actress and i love how she's playing sharon carter now yeah. as somebody who's over the hypocrisy of like everybody seems to be over superheroes at this point really really over superheroes and uh, she plays into that as well uh, because guess what? She was burned. You know, what she helped man? them out, 
and she was burned and nobody helped her. Not, Captain America decided to just, you know, go off into the distance and live his straight life without, you know, taking care of the people who got him where he was. After having some also weird feelings for his, like, niece. Yeah, it was, yes, uh, and it's not like he was, he wasn't blipped, so he could have taken care of that. So, anyways, I'm and getting, she, I'm well, getting well, heated. Well, let's, let's, I do want to speak on him, Emily Van Camp. Okay, so when I was, like, 14, 15, I was, like, coming up with this, like, book series or whatever um, that I wanted to do. I was, like, super into, like, witches and stuff like that, and so I cast. <laughs> in my head, um, I was casting for my book, and my book was Emily Van Camp. A young Emily Van Camp was going to be the like main witch girl or whatever. And so I've, I've loved Emily Van Camp since because I think at that time she was on Brothers and Sisters or something like that. She's 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 great, and, and she's then, so good on the range. Yeah, yeah. The first the first two seasons are super good. Yeah, and then after that, just don't watch them. But um, <laughs> she, she she she's so good. I'm, I'm so glad that we get to see her uh, be a ba character here but the one thing that gets to me is sam and what he talks about because she's like i don't you know i don't run on charity i need a deal and he says yes i can get you uh you know i can get you pardoned i can get you back into the u.s this was the same confidence he had telling his sister that he could get them uh their mortgage you know th this was the same confidence going into the bank where he thinks that you know, he can probably do this, but I don't know if he's going to actually be yeah, able yeah, to. Yeah, he will. Yeah, he will. It'll happen. It'll happen. Here's the thing with people like this. Um, people like this get shit done. They they get stuff done because they have the confidence to do stuff like this. Um, they People who always have the confidence and think that they cannot fail are going to succeed one way or another. And this is the type of person that Sam is. And I really appreciate somebody like that. And it's always really inspiring to see somebody like that because I mean, when you're sitting down and out on yourself all the time, like, I don't know if I can do it, then you're probably not going to be able to do it. Um, and well, I like that he has the confidence that I, I, I feel by the end of this series, he's going to have something done with his sister and he's going to have something done with Emily Van Camp. He's going to live up to his confidence. They go to look for the guy here as the super soldier or serum or whatever. They, there's this like, big i don't know this big shipyard full shipyard of, thing full of yeah full of crates or something like that those big metal crates whatever they're called and um, they're, they're having battles throughout it they go in there there's this huge like mad scientist speech i did not care about the mad scientist speech it's a whole I, 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 yeah, I, 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 I didn't care about it either um we don't ever see him in this except for this so it's, yeah. it's weird to even have him get this big moment um and we could have glossed over meanwhile um Let's let's say the Sherry Carter's outside kicking ass like, like she's twenty going, people. Like, boom, 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 boom. I was like, someone's a slayer. Somebody's a slayer. And we, just, <laughs> we just saw Raya in the Last Dragon. I tell you, Raya is a vampire slayer. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love a badass woman, and and Sharon Carter's got the I moves. Too. Emily Van Camp's got the moves. Well, the, the one thing I do want to point out about the lamb, right, yeah. is that the the camera kept on focusing on the vials. You know, they kept on focusing on the vials, and we never actually we saw everything blow up, but we didn't see those vials blow up. And I feel like when um the when uh what is it, John Walker gets around to investigating that area, he's gonna find it and he's gonna take it. That's my prediction for that. Yeah. But um, so she's out there kicking butt. You know, they go out there. Zemo actually kicks a little bit, bit of butt too. I really like the moment where Falcon and the in the Winter Soldier are arguing in the middle of a gunfight over who's right they're like literally going right or going left and i liked that kind of exposition because we can tell that they're not working as a team yet well here's the thing and also that i don't really care about is i know that they're trying to do this, this these two guys who don't really get along and end up working as a team by the end i think you know the the whole them not getting along i feel is like really forced in there um i just like let's give it they, they're already good as a team anyway. Let's go ahead and... Well, I, I, I think they're like brothers to me because they're, they hate each other. But if anybody else is going to like, you know, like know. get on in on them, then they're going to defend the, their their brother in arms. But um, and then I, I was panicked for a second because Zemo comes up, you know, and then Zemo kills the doctor. And he had told Sam... That he wasn't going to do anything without the permission, and he just kills the doctor. So well, obviously he's going doctor, after this. Also, the doctor he's, has said that he's he's made a bunch of other like super soldiers that don't look like super soldiers. He's talking about the uh, uh, the flag smashers. Yeah, yes, yes, but uh, he. Well, I'm leading into this. He's like oh. made made a line in there that 
they don't have jacked up bodies. And let me just say, I do appreciate a jacked up body. I think uh, <laughs> Chris Evans is the super soldier we need. So, uh, <laughs> um, um, but it, no, no, that that was good. Oh, and that they also experimented on Isaiah. Yeah. Bradley. I think that was very important. I hope we see some sort of young Isaiah Bradley in action. I would love I to do, see that. I do like too. That. Or yeah. even an old Isaiah Bradley. I'm not I wouldn't be upset about that. I know, that. but I'm saying I want a flashback scene. I like a I love oh, yeah. a period piece. So I want a period piece flashback scene. What if we get a period piece Isaiah Bradley show? A movie. Movie. I'm over the shows. <laughs> Let's do movies, please. Um, okay. But and and then Sharon Carter takes off. And I really hope that she Oh, she's coming. Isn't back. It, she's coming back. Because she was the highlight, I think, of this. Well, okay, almost a highlight she was of, this the highlight of this episode. I think. I, I, I think she was. Um, and then we're talking about Carly Morgenthau, right? No, we skipped over to the Flag Moon Smashers. Okay, so I, I don't have a whole lot to say about this. I do think that like we're supposed to sympathize with Carly so much, but I almost feel like her moment with her mother would have been better placed after this episode too, because we need to see more of what she's doing as a leader. I, don't, I do not buy her as a leader. I don't. Um, I think she looks in despair so much that she doesn't look like she's taking charge at any moment. And maybe I just need to watch it back or something, but I just... Uh... I hope they do something different with her besides what they're already doing. Yeah. It seems like we've been dropped into this in the middle of her story when... I mean, we have, but it would have been nice to see her a little bit more developed. Um, yeah. I don't know how, though. See, that's the thing. is like, I am, am complaining... But um, I don't have any solution to offer. So, uh, actress has done great though. Nothing well, on the actress. Well, I mean, I, I feel like her pursuit isn't necessarily the wrong thing because she's you know stealing um, you know vaccines and food like, for for yeah. people who've been displaced they go for, steal for from people the government who and, are there. Yeah, like and the government has this like surplus of like supplies that they have just been sitting on. And she mentions that she's like, "You guys have just been sitting on this. Yeah, like, that's bad." And then they blow the whole thing. And, like, that's a moment that, like, I feel like she really took charge there and blew the whole thing up. And then as they're leaving, she's like, they were never going to get it. Or whatever her line was. It was very, like, was very, that was the leadership that I'm looking for, you know? And a couple more moments like that. I mean, that's not good. I'm not saying that's good. Yeah, it was like, yeah, killing but, people. But she's, she's got, you know, she's got to be tough. And that's her being tough. And she's showing us that she's being tough. Yes, I want to see that I want to see more toughness from her and then we can have those emotional moments because we're, we're getting a lot of emotional moments from her and we need we need a little bit more toughness I want to see how she kind of it's, I want to see why I, I want to see her as a character and understand from seeing her as a character why she's in the position she's in you know yeah I, I, I think the writers want us to sympathize with her at this point but at this point you gotta show me I first. don't you gotta show me first yeah exactly. and uh, um and then we go back to uh bad cap yeah and they, uh, he's talking about how they broke Zima out, and that you know they're going to be uh, fighting uh, their own way, and that nobody's going to care how you know people are going to care about the results, how the results happen. And now we're seeing him kind of play outside the lines a little bit, or what he might do to play outside the lines. Because so Bucky bucks against Sam, saying that uh, they should have destroyed the shield at this point. And says, hey, you know what? Um, John Walker shouldn't have this shield. And if I need to take it for myself, I'm going to take it for myself. And I thought it was kind of interesting uh, that he said that. And that w we are talking a lot about symbolism in this show. And the thing is, you know, yeah, you can destroy symbols. or But, like, the Captain America symbol at this point is very intricate. And if he wants to live up to Steve, uh, uh, St uh, Steve's, like, Captain America, you can do that. But I think that, you know, the Falcon, Sam, is going to be forming his own symbolism. He's going to form himself as the Captain America that's different, distinct than Steve Rogers, but also complementary. It's He's going to be the Captain America we need now, not the Captain America Captain America was, you know? And I'm hoping that that's who we get towards the end of this. And then, um, Bucky was... Looking, looking for little balls, and we're like, "What is Bucket doing?" And then he turns around, and an agent from Wakanda is there. And I was, ah, I screamed. Yes, I was. I, I was hoping that some sort of Wakanda something was going to appear in this. 
Yeah, yeah cuz we have connections through Bucky to Wakanda so. and the whole Zemo thing. So, yeah. I I wonder what's going to happen next episode. I think it, the setup was really good. I'm glad that we got a, a Agent Carter in the middle and I I think uh we're going to get um a more dark John Walker and we're going to get John Walker super soldier serumed. Here's a, and maybe that'll start too. Here's hoping. I think that's definitely where they're leading, but um yeah. So that was the episode everybody. Oh. Uh, it was good. Yeah, I don't. Okay. I, I had a lot of fun talking about it. I think it had a lot of flaws, but it also had a lot of ups and a lot of downs. And I'm hoping that some of the issues that we're having with it, uh, that those issues are resolved, and later we can look back on this episode and be like, ah, okay, that made sense. Yeah. Um, well, if you want to check out any of our other coverage of Falcon and the Winter Soldier, uh, I will leave the links down below, and I'll leave a playlist at the end of this episode. If you want to check out any of our WandaVision episodes, uh, same goes for that. If you want to check about, out any of my book-related content, uh, please uh, check out my page. And if you want to listen and watch any content about horror movies, you can check out My Bloody Judy on the AZB Bonus Feature Channel. <laughs> <laughs> yes, okay. Um, oh, yeah, please let us know what you thought about this episode. <laughs> Make sure you like, subscribe, ding that bell, and we'll see you later. Goodbye, gentle viewers. Adios. Adios.